Uh, my name is Adelbert Chang. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Box. Uh, and the goal of my talk today is to sort of talk about how uh, you guys can contribute to CATS and along the way sort of show how CATS is laid out and we can explore some of the, uh, what the code base looks like today and sort of what the design uh, decisions, what design decisions were made along the way of uh, creating CATS. Uh, and so one of the, the key principles of, of CATS is to try to be as friendly and welcoming as possible. So I put some friendly looking cats up there. Uh, we try to be as friendly as they are. Uh, and the goal of this talk is supposed to be uh, relatively casual, so feel free to interrupt me, raise your hand if you have questions. Uh, this is my only slide for the talk, so the rest of the talk is going to be uh, in, uh, it's going to be live coding essentially. And so if along the way you see, if I'm scrolling and you see something that, that looks strange and need me to explain, just raise your hand and let me know. The thing we're going to try to do today is uh, we're going to add a a thing very similar to this prod data type, it's called biprod. Uh, and so what the problem that prod solves is, uh, let's say you have, so we know, uh, we're, we have this thing called a functor, which is essentially something that has map on it. And it turns out if you take uh, the tuple of two separate functors, so if you have a functor for f and a functor for g, and you have, uh, let's say, let me just do something if you had, uh, let's say list of A and option of A. That turns out to be a functor as well. And the way, and if you have the A to B, then you just do the, you just apply the, the function to list and you apply the function option and you have your list of B and option of B. So uh, we also have this thing called uh, a bifunctor, which is essentially like functor, except uh, you have two, sort of two sides to your data type. So if you imagine either or tuple two, you sort of have two type parameters, and if you can provide a function to map each side, it'll give you the, uh, the new one. So it's sort of like a, uh, a binary version of a functor. And so prod right now uh, helps us get the, the tuple composition, the product composition for just plain functor right here. Uh, but it turns out we can't do we can't use the same one for bifunctor because it assumes that the type the type constructor we're abstracting over is unary, whereas uh, something like bifunctor has a binary data type. So that's what we're going to add today. Uh, so we'll start by let's see, of core. Let's go all the way down. Uh, so let's we'll start by adding a bifunctor or not bifunctor a uh, biprod. That should actually be in data. So the way it is organized is sort of at the top level, we tend to have all our type classes there. So you see applicative, monad, functor, and we have a separate data folder uh, that contains, let's see, uh, all our data types. So we have the prod is here, coproduct is here, const, uh, our transformers all under data. Uh, let me reload this. OK. This, uh, Biprod? Uh, I am making it camel case. Uh, you asked me if it should be like bi and then not lowercase, not uppercase. But I'm making it uppercase. Uh, I don't really know what how the pull request is going to turn out. Maybe Cody is going to tell me to make it lowercase. <laughs> uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, and so right now, prod is uh, defined like uh, a sealed trait and it has like first and second methods. But we there's currently an issue uh, that hasn't been merged yet where we're actually just turning that into a plain case class. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. And so we're going to have two type constructors, and then because we now have two, we have uh, we have a and b, and it will do first f a b, and it will do second f a b. Uh, and let me just so I'm just going so we have uh, another thing is cats has both uh, a JVM version of the project and a JS version, and so if you just hit compile at the top level, I think it will run the tests and compile the source code for both JV and JS, but because uh, the, the JavaScript part tends to run uh, uh, slightly slow because it has to generate the JavaScript and optimize it and everything, I'm just gonna run it for a JVM. Uh, and so I'm gonna make sure this compiles. What is this? Uh, oh, I think it picked up, uh, uh oh. What is this, functor? Yes, I wanna save that. I think it's because I had uh, an old version there. Compile. 
Okay, anyways, while that's compiling, okay, it's, it's, it's compiled, uh, we're gonna add three instances for, for byprod. So we have uh, three type classes right now that have sort of abstractive or binary type constructors. We have byfunctor, uh, we also have bifoldable, where foldable abstracts over things that you can uh, fold left, fold right on. And we also have bitraverse, which is, uh, so we have the traverse data type, which is uh, like a very general form of traversing over a data structure. So you could traverse over lists, traverse over trees, traverse over options. Uh, and then we have also the bitraverse uh, version of it as being cut off right now because the resolution's a bit weird. But yeah, so we have essentially the same thing as traverse except uh, on both sides as usual. And so we see uh, by traverse, ooh, yeah, so by traverse extends by foldable and by functor. Uh, and so the instances that we can put on uh, by prod are gonna depend on, that's the wrong one, uh, are gonna depend on what instances are available for F and G. So if, F and, if both F and G only have by functor instances, instances, then we can only provide by functor for by prod. Uh, if they both have by traverse, then we can uh, also give them by traverse. Uh, for reasons, because of how implicit resolution works in Scala, we're gonna have to do some uh, hoop jumping to make sure it doesn't freak out with ambiguous implicits. And so uh, the thing we're gonna do is essentially things that are lower down in the subclass hierarchy get lower priority. And so we're gonna push, we're gonna put the most specific type up top, and we're gonna put the, the more and more general types near the bottom. And so the way we usually do this is we have the object extend something like byprod instances, and then we'll make a seal treat byprod instances, and then we'll have, yes? Yes. Uh, that's what I get for live coding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we'll have byprod instances, and we'll have by, by prod instant uh, by prod instances zero. And so this is going to contain the traverse, and then this is going to contain uh, the the functor and the the foldable. And so when implicit resolution happens, it's, if uh, it's going to look at the the one that has the most priority is gonna be the one uh, higher up the subclass hierarchy, so it's gonna be by prod instances, and if it decides that that doesn't apply to, uh, if whatever instances are available to F and G doesn't apply to, to that, it's gonna go down the subclass hierarchy and see, all right, does it have functor instance, does it have a foldable instance, and if it does, I can, I can work with that. Okay, oh, what did I do with that one? Oh, that is not supposed to be a square bracket. Okay, uh, and so we'll start by, I'll start with the functor and foldable instances first. And so one common thing that we'll see is we will use, instead of defining the classes inline, so a lot of the times we'll see if classes define like uh, implicit val f equals, and we'll just do like new functor of list, and then we'll just start implementing it right there. Uh, another thing that we'll do in these cases is if we have uh, hierarchies like this, so we can see this in prod, uh, we have these things like, let's see, like we have prod applicative, which extends prod apply, and then so we have these actual traits that uh, that are that are the instances of the type class. And the reason we do this, as opposed to just making it anonymously inline, is because we can prod applicative now reuses all the code that was defined on prod apply. So prod apply defines uh, app and product, and then prod applicative just adds a peer on top of it, and so it just sort of makes sure that the code is consistent and avoids uh, code duplication. And so we're gonna do a similar thing for by prod. Uh, and so I'll start by doing implicit, I think I can do a val. Uh, let's do by prod functor. Oh no, it has to be a def. And we can do this if, uh, if we have implicit, oh wait, no, I literally just said we're gonna do traits. So by prod functor f g. And we can do this if f has a by functor instance, and if g has a by functor instance. Oh, wait, no, we usually put those on members, I think. Yeah. Uh, so f by functor, by functor. Cool, and then we'll implement uh, by map. Oh, so this is gonna, so we're gonna have to define 
so this biprod functor will have to be bifunctor of biprod. And so normally, uh, so bifunctor expects uh, something with two holes in it, right? So we have, let me go there, bifunctor. So expect something with unary type parameters, uh, or binary, a binary type constructor, I mean. And so here we need to sort of partially apply this f and g part and then leave the a and b free so that the, the holes match up. Uh, and so normally you would have to do something really, uh, absent any sort of compiler plugin, you would have to do something really strange like type l a b equals by prod of f g a b and then uh, project that out and, do, and have this really scary looking thing. But we have something called kind projector, which is written by Eric, which essentially allow, is a compiler plugin that allows us to partially apply type constructors. Uh, so similar to how with functions you can curry a function and partially apply some of the arguments and get a function back out, uh, this is sort of like type level currying where you just partially apply, like if we had either, uh, I can say give me an either of string and, and blink, and that would become, that would turn it from a binary type constructor to a unary type constructor. And so we're gonna do the same thing here. This is gonna be a bifunctor of uh, biprod of f, g, question mark, question mark. And the question mark is the, the syntax uh, for that. What it does not like, oh, because I have this still here. And complaining that it doesn't have bifunctor, so I believe that's in here. Uh, does anyone have questions so far uh, about what I've, been doing any questions about like any code that I might have scrolled by? All right, I'll just keep going. Uh, so for bifunctor, uh, we need bimap, which requires all of these type parameters. And I believe, let me check. Uh, okay, yeah. So this is going to be a biprod of f g a b. You're going to give me a function from a to c and another function from B to D, and I'm gonna give you a byproduct of F, G, C, D. And the way this works is relatively simple. We'll say left equals uh, F dot bimap for the first side, and I'll give it F and G, and then I'll do G dot bimap of the second side, the right side, and I'll do the same thing, and then I'll just tuple those up. Cool, and so now I can say uh, implicit def by prod by functor f yeah let's just do it this way g and then again I have to do by functor of by prod of f g question mark question mark equals new by prod by functor f g by functor f by functor g does that compile over any method f entry by functor type cast has incompatible oh cool so there's our uh by prod by functor instance and so now i'm going to just do the same thing for uh by full let's see how much time do i have left do we know so if my talk technically started at 9 10 i have 30 minutes so i got about 14 minutes, so I'm gonna just add the traverse instance for now. I'm gonna skip the foldable part, but the foldable part is gonna be, actually I'm gonna to have to end up implementing foldable anyways. Uh, so I can't skip that, so let's just do by foldable. Uh, and then while I'm typing away, if anyone has questions, feel free to uh, let me know. And so this is gonna be largely the same thing uh, by foldable of by prod fg. By prod, and this will exist in about 30 seconds. Uh, yes. All right, and now I can say trade by prod by foldable extends. Oh no, I need to do this. F G uh, val F by foldable. Or no, let's make these defs. F G by foldable. This is going to be by foldable of by prod of F G question mark question mark. And I believe there's two things. Oh, and we'll actually see something interesting uh, because of this. Uh, so I'm going to just rip these from here. 
I'm going to replace the f with biprod f g. Uh, I'm going to stub these for now so I can talk about something. What do you want? Object creation code because by oh because I didn't replace it here. By prod. So one thing that's uh, worth talking about, which will I think Eric is giving a talk on later today, is the eval type. And so uh, by full left usually because of the way it works, it's going to have to traverse the entire. It's going to traverse the entire thing anyways, or walk the entire data structure anyways. But for by full right. Uh, you can actually get away with not walking the entire data structure. And this becomes useful when you're working with things like uh, infinite streams, where if you expect to walk the entire thing, your program's just going to hang. Uh, and one of the things that Katz added was this uh, eval data type, which essentially abstracts over evaluation strategy as a data type. So the instances of eval are essentially, uh, they're called now, always, and later. And that corresponds to by value, always would be uh, by name, and then uh, later will be by need. And so uh, essentially the way this was, uh, that's one thing it does. And the other thing it allows us to do is essentially have a full write uh, terminate uh, halfway through, uh, or return a result once, only evaluate as much of the data as it needs in order to return a result. So if I was, say, walking an infinite stream and I was looking for the first element such that it satisfied some condition, we can do that with eval. Whereas if we just made C be a plain C value, uh, we would not be able to sort of say in the middle of the fold, right, uh, we're d say we're done here. We don't need to walk the entire rest of the string. Uh, and I think Eric's giving a talk uh, later this afternoon about it. So by fold left, uh, it's going to be largely the same thing. Uh, we're going to do it for the first side first. So by fold left. Uh, F and G, I'm going to leave it here to make sure I'm compiling. And then uh, now I'm going to just do the same thing for the right side by fold left. But I'm going to pass in the result of the, the left one as the new accumulator. Cool. And we're going to do pretty much the same thing for this one. Oh, uh, well, let's just go ahead and do that by fold. For one, that should be right. For another, that should be first. And this should be by fold right of second, left, F, and G. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, that should be F. Cool. And yes, everyone's happy. And so now, uh, finally, we can define our by traverse instance, which is going to be pretty similar by traverse g no by traverse, and it's going to be a, give me a by traverse of by prod of f g question mark question mark, and this is going to also exist in a few seconds after I'm done typing all of this lovely boilerplate by traverse g. Okay. And so now what we get to do is, how did I do it? By prod, by traverse, oh, by traverse, is reuse all the code that uh, I just typed. Because by traverse extends both by prod, uh, extends both by functor and by foldable, I don't have to redefine by fold left, by fold right, and by map. I can just now say this is going to be the by traverse instance for f and g, or for by prod, uh, f, g, question mark, question mark. And we're going to go ahead and extend by prod, by foldable for f and g. Or no, that should be extends. That should be with, with by prod, by functor, f and g. All right, and so now I need uh, by traverse, which I'm going to steal from here. I'm going to replace f with by prod f g. Uh, I'm just going to be by prod. Oh, and I also need to rename the g to an h because we already used g up there. So this is going to be h h. H. And let me stub that to make sure I got that right. No, what do you want? Method by map and trade. Oh. Method by. 
line up and trade by traverse. So I think because, oh, because by traverse implements by, uh, implements by map here. So it's getting that, but it's also getting the by map from me extending uh, by functor. So I think I need to actually like pick one in order to make it happy. Will that make it happy? No, what do you want now? It needs override modifier. If I can spell override correctly. Now what? Override method f above class method, okay. Def f by traverse. Def g by traverse. And so this is valid override, or, uh, or not really override, but this is valid because by traverse is a superclass of, is a subclass of both uh, the bifoldable constraint here and the bifunctor constraint here. And so this is going to work largely the same way. Left uh, by traverse for the first one, f and g, similar here, by traverse, second for f and g. Let me make sure I didn't mess that up. And then now I think I can say uh, applicative instance for h. Uh, I should be able to say map to of left, right, and then just tool those together. Cool. And so now we have uh, our byproduct data type. We have all the instances. And so now uh, when implicit resolution happens, depending on what instances f and g have, it'll give me the course, the most specific instance possible. So if f and g both have bi-traverse, I can give you a bi-traverse of their product. If they only have bifunctor or bifoldable, I can only give you those instances. And so now the last thing we have to do is add tests, and I'm hoping I have time for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can get away with not having tests. <laughs> yeah, I compile, right? Then we don't need tests. Uh, uh, so one thing we need to do is, so we are gonna test the, the, make sure that these instances are valid, and so we have laws for this, and so a lot of these laws live inside, uh, so we see we have a, we have this laws submodule. And so a lot, we'll, we can jump to that actually. By traverse laws. Yeah, and so we have a couple laws here, which I actually added like just last week. Uh, and so we, we, the laws are already in place for you. And so once you've defined an instance, it's relatively easy to go and, five minutes left, okay, I can do it in five minutes. Uh, it's relatively easy to, to, to test your instances. So the hard part is getting the instances working. Uh, and then the easy part is testing them. We have all that done for you. So we're gonna go into tests, which contains all our test code, and then I'm gonna add by prod tests. Uh, and I'm gonna see what prod tests look like, so I can just rip off that package, cats, package, tests, by prod tests. And so we're gonna extend class uh, cats suite and cat suite is essentially, I'm just gonna jump to it actually, uh, a trait that contains a bunch of stuff that we generally find useful. So we're using Scala test in this case. So we have fun suite, we have the matchers, and we also extends all the necessary traits to get us automatically all the instances and the implicits uh, that cats provide. So we don't have to, does it give us all the instances? Yeah, it gives us all the instances so we don't have to like import it each time we, we, we have a test. So that becomes really useful. And I'm gonna go back, no, prod tests. Uh, all right, and so I need to import some stuff. I need to import cats, laws, discipline. And discipline is, the, is another type level project that we use for, for law testing. And so now all I need to do is say check law, by prod, let's do uh, XOR and uh, tuple two, and then we'll leave the holes there. So that's just like a string identifier for when we print out the test. And then this should say by traverse test. I think it's the test version. Yes, by traverse tests for XOR tuple two. And we need so many type parameters for this. We need int, 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 because why not? And then let's put in string, string, string. And then H is gonna be Oh wait, we need, uh, we need actually uh, our applicative here. 
And then I think we can now say, oh, no. Uh, I believe this should be by Schroeder's test of byproduct of fg, question mark, question mark. Uh, and then this will be by traverse. Does that work? Oh, I need to switch to the correct project, so this will be test JVM. No. Oh, okay. Import cats data XOR. Not found type. Import by prod. Not found type G because that is not a valid thing to do. Now what? Oh my god. <laughs> Wrong number of type remember. What? No. Oh, I see. I see what I did. No, jump correctly. Please work. Now what? Uh, R -A -V -A -S okay. So now I need to add an arbitrary instance, which I may or may not have time to do, but let's go ahead and jump to that. So because our laws are property-based tests, we need to tell, we use uh, the Scala check library, which essentially randomly generates data for us and then make sure that certain laws hold. So like if we, by, if we do by traverse of F and, G, F and then G, that should be the same thing as by traversing with the composition. And so I'm going to add, uh, I'll just add it under prod. I'll say by prod arbitrary. And I realize now that this is also not gonna work uh, because I don't have an eek instance, but uh, so I might not be able to get away with actually completing this entire thing, which will be kind of sad, but fgab equals f dot arbitrary flat map. This will be fab arbitrary dot map. This will be gab, and I'm going to do by prod fgab of FAB and GAB, and John is going to IM me. I'm going to close that. <laughs> He's somewhere in here, I think. I can't find him yet. Not found time, arbitrary, because I spelled it wrong. Um, arbitrary. Yes, <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> OK. Uh, where is Lars? How much time do I have left? Or am I over? I have three or four minutes left. I think you gave me some extra time there. Uh, all right. All right. So uh, one of the things I need to do right now is to find an eek instance for this, uh, which basically, because we have this like universal equality thing that doesn't really make sense, especially, uh, well, in, in, in the context of functional programming, we don't really consider uh, the universal equality a thing, because what does it mean to compare two functions? What does it mean to compare? Uh, any two objects, uh, really. And so we have this eek type class but that's basically a more specific constrained version of eek. Uh, and so we're just going to define that for by prod, which is relatively straightforward, uh, by prod eek. And this will rely on the fact uh, that we can compare an fab and an f or a gab by prod f g a b equals uh, new eek by prod f g a b. This will be eek b by prod f g a b by prod f g a b. And this is a boolean, and this will just be eek v on x first, y first, and eek v on x second, y second. OK, so that compiled. I'm going to go back to the tests. I think I need to import eek.tuple2 eek, because assuming this works, or you can just disappear. One error found. What is your error? Could not find a place of value for arbitrary xor tuple2 int, int, but I have it here. Uh, oh, I might need to import it, yes. Uh, by prod tests. 
So that would be discipline that arbitrary and let's just import everything because why not? Okay, well, let's do that. I'm going to add one more test, and that'll allow me to talk about something else, which is this. Wow, it's taking a really long time to compile. I even compiled it earlier this morning, so we wouldn't have to do that. So along with our usual law checking for, for by traverse, we also test for uh, serializability for instances. And the reason we do this is because, oh, yes. <laughs> And the reason we test for serializability is because uh, more and more people are using Spark, and when you try to use uh, stuff like, uh, try to, when you try to use cats with, uh, when you try to use Spark with cats, it's going to not like that very much because uh, if, the, if the instances are not serializable, it's going to close over those instances basically, and then when it tries to use Java serialization and the type classes aren't serializable, uh, it's going to freak out. And so we actually went through the trouble of making sure that all our type classes are serializable, and we have, uh, and we have tests for that to make sure that they are. Uh, so we want to make sure we test for those two. No, what? Oh, I'm missing a thing. Now what? I'm so close. Takes no type parameters. Oh, I see. Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Cool. And so now, with my last remaining 30 seconds, I'm going to run it, and hopefully this works. Uh, did it work? It worked, right? Cool. So uh, that's pretty much all there is to it, uh, <laughs> which there was a lot of boilerplate involved. but. I hope that from there you can see sort of how we organize the code base, how we define instances, how we use kind projector, where our tests are located, and how we write tests. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions about it, there's always, uh, we have a Gitter channel, so there's one thing I wanted to show. Uh, so you can get to this if you go to the actual CATS page. Uh, we have a link here that you can join a Gitter channel. And so you can ask a bunch of questions. Uh, here if you need help with a pull request or in general have a question about uh, how to use CAS or anything like that. Uh, and generally, we try to be as friendly and welcoming as possible. So the question was, we have both, uh, if I understand correctly, we have both prod and by prod simply because prod is only able to abstract over unary type constructors and by prod abstracts over binary type constructors. And presumably if we ever have like a, a, a three area type constructor, we would have like a tripod or, or something like that. Uh, and ideally we'd, we'd not, we wouldn't have to write all that boilerplate because especially when I was defining by prod and all the instances, that was a very mechanical thing to do. And so the question was if we can get the compiler to do that with us, for us. And I'm wondering, is, is that a, yeah, I'm asking this a rhetorical question because I'm, I'm now half expecting there to be some sort of library that you wrote that I don't know about that actually does <laughs> generate this for us. Yeah. And just sort of give some context, uh, Malus is referring to kittens, which is, let's see if we can actually bring it up, uh, which is a library that uh, uses, I think, export hook, uh, or is it on shape list right now? Yeah, export hook. Uh, and, and cast, and it essentially allows you to automatically derive type class instances. So if you have like, uh, like so here is a cat that has one type constructor, he automatically without doing any work uh, can get a functor instance for it. So he doesn't have to do like, in certain cases, uh, it can automatically derive functor instance for you. And I don't, do, you have, do we have applicative in Monad as well or? Not yet, but soon. <laughs>